Um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even uh, 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 moves forward to describe in separate places in the Quran that um, the type of punishment you're going to get is actually very determinant of what you did. For those of you that ate the money of the orphans, that took money from people unjustly, you're not getting anything but fire. You're, for you will be the punishment of fire from the inside and you'll be cooked from the inside out. Other people... Rasulullah very vividly describes the person who lied all the time. Guess what's going to be punished? This is a purification for your tongue. Your tongue is going to be punished. For the individual, and uh, it's proportional to what that, uh, what that person did. If you were unjust to your own mind, that's another punishment that's described in the Quran. That your head is smashed open over and over and over again. And it gets reformed and gets smashed and gets reformed and gets smashed. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop this. But it's, it's fully recognized at this moment that this was deserving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't do something that's not just. This was deserving. You had every opportunity. But you didn't take heed. So this is what's, uh, what's there. And uh, the, uh, the, the recipients of this punishment... Also, it's the most depressing state when the recipient of a punishment understands that they deserve this punishment. And the reason I keep saying that is, um, I, this is not to, to, the, uh, to comparison at all, but I've had the opportunity of volunteering at a prison. Volunteering at a prison as a, as a, as a prison chaplain. And one of the things that I remember seeing that was actually very shocking to me was Part of the punishment is to actually be imprisoned where your movement isn't, you can't do whatever you want to, you can't make the choices that you want to. That's a part of the punishment. But actually the, the effects of the imprisonment, which I found most shocking and were most pronounced, was what it did to their mindsets. There were people who, they might have resisted in the beginning, but at a certain point they started just accepting and it completely depressed their lives. On, they're here, there's nothing they can do, and to the point where I accept that I'm here and there's nothing else that can be done. All my hopes and dreams and aspirations, they all just melt away. And that's what's described as one of the punishments. It's not just a physical punishment. It's a punishment of the mind. It's not just a physical purification. It's a purification um, uh, 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 of their hearts and souls as well. And that's something that's captured over and over again in, in, in the Quran. And that's something that's captured over and over again in the hadith that describe the hellfire. If someone had a problem controlling their private parts, I'm not going to get into the vivid descriptions, but there are vivid hadith of what happens uh, uh, for them. It's very, very, it's a very scary place. And again, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to uh, make us afraid to the point where, yeah, I know there might seem to be some benefit in lying. I might get ahead a little bit in my life by taking money unjustly, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of puts forward the uh, descriptions of hellfire to make some people recognize that, is that really a good course of action? Is it going to be worth a, a single moment in the hellfire? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu says in another hadith that the person with the most beautiful life, the most privileged life on earth, whatever we can imagine. Back then, they would probably consider each of our lives the most privileged life on earth. We get to be in rooms that are air-conditioned and heated all the time. That's pretty amazing. Kings of the past didn't have that luxury, right? But the person with the most privileged life on earth, your dream home on earth, they will enter hellfire for, and it's described as just dipped for one second, and they will be questioned right afterward, did you ever have any comfort in your life? No, no. I've never seen anything from good. There is no mercy that I've ever experienced. That'll be what they say to it because of how traumatized they are from that experience. Hellfire isn't just about pain. It's also about all of the trauma and, uh, that's associated with it. And it's supposed to be one of those moments where you start fearing that whatever I might be involved in, whatever pain and struggle I have in obe obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's worth it because it's not nearly like the pain and punishment that's, uh, that can be found in, in the hellfire. And I said there, it would get positive, yes. Can you, can you explain what you're talking about when you said being unjust to your mind? 
to to your mind? You to your mind, yes. Yeah. Um, Can there's, you a, there's a specific hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Again, this one is found in Nisa'i that uh, the person who had the ability to learn but they chose not to, they are th that they are committing injustice to their mind, to their own uh, to their own mind. The one who has the faculties and ability to uh, expand themselves and they chose not to. Specifically, it was a, a, the way he talked about it was, uh, was ilm, and people expect that to be like Islamic knowledge. But actually, I would say if, if we look at it even in more depth, a person who just chose not to uh, 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 use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, or at least even appreciate it, that is oppression to the self. That is oppression to their own, uh, their own aqal Um So uh, that's what I meant by that. But it's this idea, uh, uh, and again, we will, we, will, we will stop at this moment of getting uh, being so... Um, so, so disappointed um, and, and, and so uh, demotivated. But I will finish off with one ayah and then we'll get into uh, actually some beautiful stories that occur uh, as well. But this one ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahalikum nara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this actually comes down to what you're supposed to be using the descriptions of hellfire to do. I think this is a pretty good case study of an ayah that says the descriptions of hellfire, it's not supposed to depress you, but actually it has a very specific purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have believed, protect yourself and your families from a fire. Whose fuel is men and stones, or people and stones. I will, I will be very gender inclusive here. <laughs> who's, who's, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gender inclusive. Um, whose fuel is people and stones. And actually, the reason um, many scholars have said this is a very vivid description of hellfire, and this is among the most complete descriptions of hellfire. But it's interesting that it actually doesn't say just save yourselves, it says what ahli kum. And the scholars, when they kind of talked about it, they said this is a perfect archetype for understanding why descriptions are given about hellfire and why are there such scary verses in the Quran. <coughs> Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families. Who are the most difficult people in the world to work with? I know it's kind of hard and tough to say, but it's your family many times. Your family is someone who uh, are people that can cut you like no one else can cut you. They can make comments that cut so deep. And it's so difficult to sometimes work with your family. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Save them from a fire. The fire is so hot that the only thing that can power it are people and stones. And then, in case that wasn't enough, in case your family made another mean comment, cut you off uh, from something, did something terrible to you, whatever the case may be, in case your mother-in-law decided to, to do something to, to make your life quote unquote a living hell or something, whatever the case may be. In case that motivation wasn't enough that a fire is just that, Allah continues, and actually that fire is not just running wild itself, it's designed in a very specific way to cause the most amount of pain at every moment. Not only is it a fire whose fuel is men and stone, but actually it's being managed. It's being managed by these terrible angels that are really stern, that are really harsh and severe. And they're making sure that if you get to a point of the fire, you know like when you're cooking something, and some, like if you're barbecuing and it's uh, uh, the piece of chicken or something is toward the edge of the grill, and it's not getting grilled properly, they push it back. They push it back so that, hey, you're not feeling the heat of the flame, push it right back, push it right back. And it's supposed to motivate the person of like, okay, I lost motivation for a second, but that description got even more vivid, so I need to really go back to my family and really 